This is my 1998 Jeep Cherokee XJ. It's the Sport Grizzly Edition. Now Sport is just what Jeep calls their base models. And this is pretty base. It does have air conditioning and power mirrors. Other than that, there's really no other options. And the Grizzly Edition, I do have some questions about. I'm not exactly sure on what they are. There's very limited information out there on them that I could find anyway. But from what I can tell, it has a Grizzly sticker and different wheels and asking the previous owner about it didn't really give me any answers either because he just seemed a little confused by the question and he didn't really care he just wanted me to take this thing away that was staining his driveway with four different types of fluids so what makes this xj special aside from it being this mysterious grizzly edition is that i bought it from almost the original owner i say almost because he bought this 98 jeep in 99 with 13,000 kilometers on it and he used it as a daily driver for over 20 years, which is very impressive. And it's about to roll over 400,000 kilometers on the odometer. So it's seen its fair share of the road and judging by the condition of the sway bar end links and the dents and gouges on the lower control arms, I, I think it's seen more than its fair share of the woods, which ironically enough, that's exactly where I'm with it right now. And it's been a little bit of a love-hate relationship because it's so old. It's over 20 years old and it's, it has many, many issues that have not been addressed for a very long time. So I'm out here in the middle of the woods. I'm actually pretty deep out there. So I'm going to make my way out of here and I'll tell you more about it. This is a two-door XJ and because of the bigger, heavier doors, the hinge pins are more prone to going bad than in a four-door. And this one does have pretty bad hinge pins on this side. It can make it difficult to open and close the door sometimes. Also another option that I forgot to mention earlier are these butterfly windows. It has an interesting golden retro looking tint on the back of them that's from factory as well, which is pretty neat. So hopefully this old Jeep will get me back with these very worn out BF Goodridge KO2s. They're awesome tires, but they're really low on tread. And I think each one has been plugged at least twice and one doesn't really hold air very well. And I have a donut spare tire that's 22 years old so hopefully we don't need that <laughs> that is a neutral <laughs> you can hear the clutch release bearing sounds like it's grinding coffee also, you don't really need the key to start this. The lock cylinder is so worn out, you can start it with anything, any key or a butter knife even, it will start this. <laughs> so that's definitely something I'll have to address. Kind of like the manual windows. So something that this Jeep is going to need in the very near future is a new clutch. When the XJ was first released in 1984, it was really popular and there weren't too many changes to it other than the engines evolving over the years until 1997 when it got a bit of a facelift and a butt lift to round off some of the corners and also a new interior. But, but it's hard to believe that this is the less boxy version. I think we hit a rock. So after buying this, almost immediately the power steering pump went on it. It dumped all the fluid and metal shavings everywhere. It just looked like a glitter bomb went off in the engine bay. 
I think I'm almost back to the road. So I made it back to the main road and this thing has it's a pretty good pull for such an old worn out engine. So this XJ has the four liter straight six engine, which has a reputation for being bulletproof. And I do believe it because this thing is very old and very worn out. It's about to roll over 400,000 kilometers without any major work being done to it. It hasn't had a rebuild or even the timing chain replaced. And you probably already noticed that it has the five speed manual transmission. It's the AX15, which Dodge actually used in some pickup trucks in the 90s as well. So it's a pretty tough transmission. One scary problem with this is that it has some really funky wiring, and that is the aftermarket alarm that this thing once had. It was funny because on my test drive, uh, there's a light here on, on the dash, right? between the climate controls and the stereo and quite clearly it has something to do with an aftermarket alarm or sometimes people put these lights in just for scaring potential thieves away to make them think it has an alarm so i just asked the previous owner on my test drive you know so what's this light and he he looks at it and just says you know what I've never noticed that before. And keep in mind, this is the almost original owner. He's owned it for over 20 years and he's telling me he's never noticed this light. So I, I didn't really believe that. And then after the test drive, when I opened the hood, you could see an aftermarket alarm siren in there with the wires cut to it. So clearly there was some issue with the alarm that it wouldn't go off and he chose to cut the wires off. A really neat feature in this XJ is that it actually has a shift light. It's pretty cool. I've never had a vehicle with a shift light, especially, especially an old Jeep. So the engine is due for a rebuild or a replacement. So I'm really on the fence on what I'm actually gonna do. I don't know if I'm gonna rebuild this engine, maybe build a stroker or Maybe even a diesel. I really like diesel engines, so I may go with a Volkswagen TDI engine. I'm not really sure yet. It, it's still a lot to think about, and I, there's a lot of other problems that have to be fixed before I can dig into that project. Even with all the issues this has and all the work that's going to go into it, I, I really like it, and I'm really excited that I got it.